Mrs. Bild, when you learned today that the agreement between Ukraine and the EU was uh, agreed by both parliaments in a wonderful way, were you happy? Yes, it's been an historical moment for all of us that we together, two parliaments at the same time, have signed an association agreement. Uh, it's been very, very strong feelings. I'm very happy about that. But the reason why I ask you if you were happy is because is there by all the desires, the wishes of your Ukraine being fulfilled? Well, it is uh, several Ukrainian governments, several Ukrainian presidents and several Ukrainian parliaments, not the least today, a vast majority, who have wanted it, asked for it, negotiated it. It is the will of the representatives of the people of Ukraine. It is not Europe who has asked for it. But it's not into force uh, before the end of next year. Uh, yes, and I think it's, uh, we have to go as quick as possible to implement it. But the important political message today is that Europe is united to support the fight of the people of Ukraine for the independence, sovereignty and territorial integrity as they are suffering an invasion from foreign troops. Which means that you are actually saying to Russia uh, where the, the border, so to speak, between the EU interest sphere and uh, Russia is to be found. Uh, no, this agreement, of course, is not anti-Russian. The trade relationship, that's the way you're strong in nowadays Europe. Free economic relations are good also for Russia. What we're saying to Russia is it's unacceptable to redraw the borders of Europe with military force. In nowadays Europe, you don't protect minorities with military force, but by the rule of law. But in which way do you foresee that the situation in Ukraine can change uh, so that the common people really can feel a difference? Well, uh, trade has been a driving force for both freedom, peace and well-being. It's been the backbone of the economic growth and prosperity of Europe since the European Union has been founded. So strengthen economic relation, strengthen free trade relationship, but so many other things, strengthening also political relations, as the people of Ukraine wanted with Europe, is of course opening a lot of possibility to raise their living standards, not the least to give humanitarian aid for those who need it now, those that are affected by the war. But Ukraine is still very much dependent on the uh, Russian deliverance of mm -hmm. natural gas and uh, oil. Don't you foresee an uh, increase in the Russian uh, ways of uh, turning down the amounts which shall go into Ukraine? Well, that is part of the Putin way of waging war. The association agreement between the European Union and Ukraine is not anti-Russian, does not affect the relationship but that is between what you within the EU think no, that's what the, that's what Ukraine thinks that's yeah. what that's what Ukraine thinks because it is Ukraine who has wanted and voted for in freedom as a sovereign country for disagreement as many other countries did in Europe it's not something that we have initiated or forced on Ukraine and of course a well-being economically strong Ukraine is good for Russia. So it should not be one or the other. We want to have free trade with everybody, of course, including with Russia, when they will behave according to international law. Last question. Uh, do you foresee a similar approach between the Ukraine and NATO? It's up for the Ukrainian people to decide which relationship they want to have with the European Union. It's up for the people of Ukraine to decide which relationship they want to have with Russia. It's up to the people of Ukraine to decide which relationship they want to have with NATO.